Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. In this update, we're going to be diving deep and giving an overview of what's happening in the extended range because it does appear we start to trend colder as we head into that middle of the month time frame with more blocking over the top with the ridging starting to build across Greenland as well as into Alaska here. That's going to pull and drag some of that colder air down into the lower 48. So I appreciate all my subscribers out there. I would love to reach 250,000 subscribers by the end of the month and heading into March timeframe. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button and follow along because I'm here on a daily basis, keeping you well ahead of the storm. So let's take a look at the teleconnections because I always look at the atmosphere from the top down and this is the Arctic Oscillation and essentially what we're looking at here here's the green the green line which is your average mean deviation and whenever it's starting to trend negative that's predominantly pushing the colder air from the upper levels of the atmosphere into the lower 48 and the further further you know negative it gets the colder it's going to be allowed to get into the lower 48 so you can definitely see the trend as far as the green line just your average mean actually keeps it predominantly negative all the way through and if you're looking at this map here this is actually february 5th time frame and goes all the way through that march 22nd so overall the main push keeps that colder air predominantly into the lower 48 into the extended range with the arctic oscillation and if we look at the nao which is your north american oscillation kind of the same way it starts to trend negative and it stays predominantly negative all the way through the period for the next four or five weeks so you got a natural push coming out of, out of canada to keep pushing those colder anomalies into the lower 48 and if we look at the epo it's almost kind of the, implying the same way it's not as bullish but it still does appear that it trends more negative and it stays neutral to negative through the middle of February, through the end of February, and all the way into the beginning of February, March timeframe, through that second week of March. And if you were looking at the PNA, which is your Pacific North American, yeah, it's predominantly starts to appear to have more ridging starting to build across the Western regions. That typically implies the ridge will be starting to slowly come back across the Pacific Northwest and keep predominantly the cooler and colder anomalies into our central and eastern two thirds of the US. And if we take a look at another element, which is your Southern Oscillation Index, this shows, and this is kind of a more of a, a leading indicator and we are in predominantly in an El Nino type setup and we can definitely see it's basically the lowest it's been since the start of winter. We had a daily drop now of a negative 41. That's a lot of instability out there in the Equatorial Pacific. And that's why we've had a lot of the rain in California and the southern flank with the more active El Nino getting, you know, coming on a full throttle. And now that we're going to be mixing some of that colder air in it with as well, that could put more potential snow opportunities into the lower 48 as it starts mixing in into the, some of that colder air as finally some of that colder air comes down. But yeah, predominantly over the last 10 days, here is your total precipitation and yes the, those areas across the pacific northwest especially in california just got clocked with those series of atmospheric rivers and they were predominantly fairly slow i mean it was pretty astonishing yesterday we still had the swirl out there into portions of the southeast and that was from the first one that actually left all the heavy flooding flooding rains into san diego and that was like 10 days ago that kind of shows you how how uh, these systems just kind of moved across but they didn't really move that far too fast and that's why they left so much amount of heavy precipitation so it's been predominantly wet especially with those two atmospheric rivers but now that's going to start to somewhat subside and because the jet stream is going to be starting to buckle and that when that starts to buckle that's going to drag some of that colder air now when we look at the velo vertical velocity index whenever you see some of these areas into green and the and the darker shade of greens 
that is your upward rising motion air. You got to get air to rise to be able to squeeze out precipitation out of that atmosphere. But so you can see pretty predominantly over the lower 48, we don't really have any sinking air, right? We don't have too much of it. But, you know, those areas in orange and the darker orange, that's more or less your sink, sinking air. So it's the air is automatically rising with that negative SOI index and the subtropical jet stream. We already know we're on a full force El Nino and that is going to continue with the more active subtropical jet. And even on the extended range, as we head towards that 16th, through that 21st time frame, it's still fairly bullish down here in our southern flank here with with the heavier amounts of precipitation across these these regions, especially along the more active subtropical jet stream. So, but we're already in a rebuilding phase. It's almost like deja vu. And I'm looking at this overall setup. I mean, this is your snowpack, right? So we 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 had the extended plunge of colder temperatures in, in January. It was predominantly about a, a three-week stint there that we had some very cold air and some active storm systems. In fact, six of them. Now we had the big warm-up, right? We had the rapid warm-up. Much of the lower 48 is experiencing pretty mild conditions and very warm weather. And obviously that's melted a lot of the snow. So now here is the current look on the actual snowpack so yes predominantly a lot of this snow is actually melted not even on the ground anymore so now that we're going to be trending colder we're going to be in that rebuilding phase and what i mean by that we're going to be having to start the step down process kind of like all over again what we saw in the month of january so a lot of a lot of what i'm seeing is we're looking at kind of a more of a repeat than what we had in january but i'm not calling for anything as drastically as cold as the month of january by no means <laughs> i don't think we get near as cold but the overall setup does appear colder and then more active as far as these storm tracks continuing to push into the lower 48 and that obviously creates more so snow opportunities than you know what we've seen as of late so let's break this thing down for you so for the next five days we're still got predominantly that bridging we've seen for an extended period of time highlighted across the upper midwest through the upper great lakes into the northeast but we do start to see the troughing and some of that you know all the, the 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 same setup that brought all the pacific elevated jet to cross the to the west coast is going to start to subside and then once that colder air starts to funnel into our western regions that's going to put, put the snow across our western regions as well so if we look at where the snow is going to be falling for the next five days it's predominantly going to be into those intermountain west regions across you know the sierra mountains getting crushed with those heavy snows and then back into nevada here through the flagstaff region all the way into new mexico and the mountains of colorado just getting crushed with heavier snows but notice it starts to filter a little bit and these dry slots across the northern states like the dakotas into minnesota and especially there in southern canada where they've been predominantly on the snow drought up there they're going to get more active and start getting into more of the snow snows track as the overall system kind of shifts and it's going to be a slow process because i told you it's going to be a step down process again the so notice where the snow track is well to the north right and i think each one of these systems will get just a little bit further south as we head into the month of february so if we take a look of what's coming for sunday time frame we, we start to see the trough starting to dig in into the middle of the United States across the southern plains. On the southern flank of there, definitely concerned about stronger thunderstorms and could be even some severe storms out ahead of this system Friday, Saturday, into that Sunday time frame. Well, further to the northwest, it's starting to be cold enough to transfer some of that into snow especially across northern portions of New Mexico, getting into the Texas Panhandle western portions of Oklahoma and back into Kansas here with a renewed snow track starting to take shape and it's taking advantage of that colder air really starting to build across our western regions and that's where the huge change is going to be coming from it's going to be starting to trend out west as as this ridging out east will slowly start to erode 
and that colder air will start to slowly start to funnel in from west to east as we head into that first full second week of February and heading towards that middle of the month time frame. So at ahead of it, still in the warm sector, right? I'm not greatly too concerned about this getting to be a widespread severe weather outbreak or anything like that, but we still have an indication where some of those storms could be strong and so minimal, minimal severe side, especially those areas in Eastern Texas, getting into those, you know, Arkansas region, back into Mississippi and Western Tennessee, that will be in the day on Friday. Then as we go into Saturday and as that troughing gets a little bit closer, that will pull this, this piece of energy back into the warm sector, a little bit higher dew points down here. And so some of those could be on the strong and even marginal severe side into Southeast Texas, into Louisiana, back into Mississippi and Alabama. And then as we go into Sunday, as more cold air starts to funneling in from the West, that'll keep it more elongated further South, more into the Southeastern regions, into the Dixie Alley region. So we'll be having to look for possible strong to severe thunderstorms into that region as we go into that Sunday timeframe. But, but the Northern side, I think we are gonna have a low pressure center starting to develop sometime in the vicinity on Sunday timeframe into the Texas Panhandle and gonna be tracking Northeast. So this is gonna pull down kind of a, a wet snow, mixing in with rain, mixing in with the snow at times. We saw the snowpack and we start to see the trend. So it's, it's not a massive push cold all at once, but it's a subtle, subtle push of that colder air starting to filter in. And yes, it's going to be some kind of heavy, wet snows across this region with the storm track essentially taking it from the Texas Panhandle through western Oklahoma, through Kansas, through northern portions of Missouri, all the way into northern Illinois, and eventually heading into Michigan, back into Wisconsin with the first initial snow track with that first storm starting on Sunday, Monday, and then finally heading into our northern areas in the mid-Atlantic regions as we head into that Tuesday timeframe. But overall, the trend will be colder. So once that moves through, that western cold will finally start to push east and then as we head towards the middle of the month right this is the middle of february here looking at some of these ensemble guidance we already kind of showed you the teleconnections starting to trend colder so that's going to push the colder air as we had start to see more blocking to start to build over the top and all that all that ridging that was locked over the lower 48 for an extended period of time it's starting to starting to push back we're back into our upper uh, upper regions and that's going to push some of the colder anomalies in into the lower 48 and the longer that goes on the the greater the probabilities of this this uh, this cold to get deep, you know even colder as we get into that second half of february so if we look at the overall 500 millibar and some of these ensembles as we have the blocking starting to build over the top we already know we have the te teleconnections in our favor pushing that colder air further south into the lower 48 we already know we have a more active subtropical jet stream so we are going to be looking at some you know active active times and predominantly over the trend should be if we had a if we had a, sto, a, a snow track from the Texas Panhandle through northern Illinois, and as we saw in the month of January, that first one and then that second wave that comes down should push it a little bit further south. So it should be kind of a more of a step down process as we get towards into the deeper part of you know February there, heading into that first week of March the storm track should push further south. And so those areas that, you know, climatologically get potentially winter storms into portions of the south and into portions of the southeast will definitely be looking at opportunities because it does appear to be a favorable setup and a more active storm track with colder air and around during those time frames that we'll be looking for those opportunities for areas that haven't really seen that much snow so far this season and it stays that way this is all the way through the first week of march so it does appear at least on the surface that once we hit this weekend by the 12th time frame 
it's predominantly going to be a first initial phase from the west to the east and then once we hit that mid-month time frame we're going to have an extended period of time of colder conditions not january type cold or anything like that but we are going to be predominantly below average and well below average in a lot of spots for the middle part of february and heading into that first week of march so that'll kind of give you an overview of what i'm thinking in the extended range as we head into that last that secondary phase of the month of february so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching if you like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update while i protect you before and after storm